All right, guys, this is Ross. We're gonna do a review today. Um, we have a couple reviews, actually, that I think I might do today. Um, the first fig here in this video is gonna be Azores Dark. We've talked a lot about this fig in the past. And, um, well, I don't really know how much, what else I really wanna say about it, to be honest with you, because we've covered it so often. And, um, in so many years now, we've done a number of, of reviews, but I will say this year that the, uh, we planted our mother tree in the ground, um, not this past spring, but the year before. So this is now really its second season um, in the ground from a 10 gallon size pot. And it was really well rooted out in that 10 or 15 gallon size pot. Um, right next to the Azores Dark is an LDA, Long to Dupe. And then on the left here is an LSU Champagne. And for whatever reason, people keep telling me that Azores Dark is vigorous. What I completely disagree because you could very clearly see the differences in size between the LDA, the LSU Champagne, and the Azores Dark. In fact, you could barely even see the Azores Dark. I mean, I really have to move trees out of the way to get a glimpse of it. Um, it's really about two thirds of the size of the LDA, the LSU Champagne, probably even less than that in all honesty. This has never been a very vigorous variety for me. So if you're experiencing that, it's probably maybe just because the tree is young um, and it hasn't really set a whole lot of fruit just yet, or you don't really have the variety that I have. And that's kind of what I wanted to, that is something I wanted to touch on because as we've discussed before, this variety here is a uh, hardy Chicago type which essentially means that it is um, one of the many named figs that are very similar to each other. There is at least a hundred, and I have them listed in my spreadsheet if you're interested, but there's at least a hundred of these that are so similar that it's almost not worth growing multiples of each. But I have found at least through my little <clears throat> very uh, short experimentation here of those different types that the Azores Dark really impressed me. Um, it really has a thicker, it seems like a thicker and a jammier uh, interior to it, which is really the, the texture of a fig that I really like. Um, the flavor, I would say, is about average, maybe slightly better. It's got a, a lot of sweetness, and I think that maybe is another thing that differentiates it from other hardy Chicago types, is the sweetness is pretty high so that it can dry on the tree pretty reliably. Um, it doesn't really mold or ferment all that often. It's just a, a very good fig for somebody in a, a really a, a colder, more humid climate. Um, I don't know the hardiness level of it. The productivity so far on this tree has not been the highest. Uh, historically it has, but since I've planted it in the ground here, it seems to have really just not taken its time really getting adjusted to this location um, in this in-ground planting here. Um, whereas you can see this LDA really has taken off, the LSU Champagne has taken off, and therefore actually the LSU Champagne has significantly more fruits on it than the Azores Dark did this year. But I think a large part of that, the biggest reason for that, is simply just due to the fact that this tree has had a lot of shoots from the base, uh, the Azores Dark, and I did not thin out the shoots, did not thin out the center, Whereas if I bring you guys in here and show you the LSU Champagne, a lot of these branches are really separated and apart from each other. Um, you can really tell that from the base. The base is really spread out. It's one of the best trees I have that demonstrates this, getting that light penetration um, into the canopy. And therefore LSU Champagne put out a, a really a lot of fruits. Um, it did rain. It's been raining quite a bit here recently. Uh, we had, did have some dry periods, but it just, uh, it rained quite a bit at night. And I do have some figs here that have been splitting. Um, not just on the Azores Dark, there's uh, one here that has split actually. It's a minor split, it's not the end of the world. But nonetheless, it is still a split. Whereas I have other figs, you can see the, the damage there with the eye. I have other figs, however, that have split so badly that uh, 
you really can't even eat them. At least this one here is, I guess, somewhat, I don't know, closer to being edible. Um, I don't know how that really doesn't really make too much sense, but basically if these figs split in any way, it's just not a good thing. And um, LSU Champagne, my LSU Huye, seem to be ones that have the right shape to them, that more Celeste style shape, but they do crack on the sides. And even the uh, LSU Tiger, the LSU Huye, they actually split at the eye. Uh, Champagne, this one here has split um, you can see that it's pretty bad. It's pretty much wide open. The good news with the LSU Champagne and, the, and or the, just really the LSU Champagne is that it has a very short hang time. This Azores Dark got attacked by something and I find that out of all the figs here in this plot, Azores Dark is one of the sweetest and it gets attacked by the ants, by the slugs, by the squirrels, by just anything. Um, the same thing with another variety I have in here called La Magdalene. So I find it really just by taste to be a very sweet fig. And it clearly, clearly is just judging off of the, uh, the animals that visit this tree. Um, I had one really a few days ago now. I had a couple a few days ago. Um, and they were quite good. I mean, look at that. That's actually really impressive. Um, you can really tell in a way just how jammy that is. Let me get you yeah, a close up here. I got some sap on my arm and it's actually really itchy and very painful. So I'm kind of struggling here with lots of pain. <laughs> but look at that. That actually looks really, really good. It's quite, uh, there's actually quite a bit of syrup or um, nectar in there um, but I find even usually it doesn't have a whole lot of syrup usually it's quite thick and dense um, historically I find the hardy Chicago types of these types all of the hundred named or more figs of them um, they usually taste like strawberries um, this one I find does taste a bit like strawberries with the Concord grape note to it um, it tastes a lot like Smith when it's really, really ripe. Uh, it tastes a lot like some of the more higher end figs when it's very, very ripe. So let's try it. Yeah, it's quite good. Um, the thing is, I think people are now starting to get this more and more, this fig. And they're starting to review it, which is good. Um, I want more people to have this variety, but the issue is, is that people, when they review these varieties, they're not, um, when they compare hardy Chicago types, there's a few things they're just not doing. One, you need to have the tree for like three or five years. The hardy Chicago types, they take a number of years for them to mature. Even if you had it in a pot for three years and then you plant it in the ground, it's gonna be a very different fig. So I really have to wait a couple more years having this tree in the ground before it can get back, I think, to that really, that high state of maturity it once was in a pot, um, the flavor just will not be the same. Um, and that's really across the board with most of the hardy Chicago types. They really don't shine, most of them actually, till year four that I have come across. Um, and other friends I have have actually trialed these varieties for a very long time. The other thing is that if you're gonna, you're gonna review a variety, you should make sure that it's at a good ripeness. Um, the hardy Chicago types in general relatively taste the same, especially if you are picking them early. Because if you pick them early, you're not gonna be able to pick up those extra uh, little notes that come into the fig when it actually ripens to perfection. So if you're not picking it to perfection, I find there are a number of people who do this um, that actually review some of these hardy Chicago types, compare them amongst each other, not just Azores Dark, but others, as well, and they're not really doing this um, in the right way. There's just a couple things. They're, they're, making, they're jumping to some conclusions, you could say. I mean, I don't wanna speak for those people, but you could very easily jump to some conclusions on some of these varieties um, if they're just not picked to perfection, they're not uh, a mature tree, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we really should do a video, I think. I've been saying it, but we should do a video on why figs take so long to mature, you know, um, 
really the big differences between a fig off of a young tree versus a mature tree, uh, the differences in the, the observations that you might make. You know, I might say early on it's a vigorous variety. Like some people, I've been, I've been noticing quite a few people have been saying that Azores Dark is a aggressive, vigorous grower, but that has not been the case for me and I've had it for, I think, like five years now. The other big thing um, is, a, is the naming convention of this fig. There is a, uh, a synonym that a, a friend of mine um, up in Hamilton, New Jersey, I got this Azores Dark from him. He didn't want it anymore. And he originally got it from a guy named Dom, which I believe is in Connecticut, Massachusetts. I think he's in Massachusetts. Um, and Dom... Um, grew this fig originally. I, I don't know how he, I think he got it from a, a Portuguese guy who got it from, there was an Azores white, there was an Azores dark. Um, I think that's Portugal, right? Or is that the island of Azores? But I think that's in Portugal. But anyway, um, so he actually came back years later after reappearing in the fig community. And I got to actually talk to the guy. Uh, that's Dom, by the way. Um, and he told me that there is no such thing as Azores Dark or Azores White. There's a Seo Miguel Roxo, which is the black version, and there's a Seo Miguel White, whatever that translates to. So you could sort of infer, based off what I, the guy I got it from, he had it as Azores Dark, so you could make a conclusion that it is indeed Seo Miguel Roxo, and plenty of people are growing Seo Miguel Roxo. Uh, whereas not as many people were growing Azores Dark as it's just been very difficult as my tree, again, doesn't grow very quickly. So it's been difficult to get um, the variety into many people's hands. You know, it wasn't until really last year when I planted this that we have started to get more cuttings available to people. But uh, the, point, the point I'm really trying to make here is that with the naming convention, um, there is still a chance, and I'm not hopeful or anything. Um, I, I do believe that Seo Miguel Roxo and Azores Dark are the same fig, um, but there is still a chance just, just in general how there could be mix-ups with people. Uh, maybe the person I got it from, um, maybe it was named something else and he named it Azores Dark, or maybe somewhere down the line it got messed up. And I know that Dom um, actually grows a couple figs. He grows um, a fig called Sangua Dulce which is another hardy Chicago type. He grows another one called Brockton Greek, and I have acquired both. I actually have both of them to then compare to my Azores Dark because I wanna make sure that this fig is indeed Azores Dark and not Sanguidulce or not Brockton Greek. So far, I don't think it's Brockton Greek, but Sanguidulce does look quite similar to it, um, at least thus far. You know, obviously I need a couple years to really make an accurate conclusion on that. And then of course I should find myself Seo Miguel Roxo to confirm this as well. But at the end of the day, you know, this is all kind of just like testing just because I got nothing else better to do. You know, um, I would say with 99% certainty that it is indeed Seo Miguel Roxo. So the only reason I'm bringing this up is because I get this question sometime well, Ross, if it's Seo Miguel Roxo, why didn't you name it Seo Miguel Roxo? Why didn't you change the name from Azores Dark to Seo Miguel Roxo? And that's just not something you do. When you have a variety that has come to you as a particular name, you should keep it as that particular name. Because as I said, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, maybe the guy I got it from messed up in some way. Maybe Dom messed up in some way. So you know, at some point down this chain, there could be some sort of error or there could be some sort of error in some other way that I don't know. So it's better rather than just saying it's Azor, it's Seo Miguel Roxo, it's, it is Azores Dark and, uh, and that's it and keeping it like that just to keep the record straight 100%. Until there is a genetic test that says they are exactly the same fig, which even a genetic test might not <laughs> might not give us the total picture, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's just what I'm going to do, and that's how I'm going to keep it, is the same name, um, Azores Dark, as what I received it as. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this one, uh, again, with Azores Dark, another review that we did, another year. Um, 
yeah, it's a great fig. I hope you guys will try it someday. It is in my top five, I think, currently, along with Malta Black. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.